so I've been I've been asked to review um, valence electrons, and the qu first question I asked was, do you know what orbital, how to write orbital notation? And so it seems to be some some confusion or some interest in reviewing that too. So since they all go together, and the way you learn how to do valence electrons or understand what valence electrons are starts with understanding orbital notation. It also goes to the structure of the electron cloud, goes to orbitals and things like that. So let's start with orbital notation. That's kind of where we started in here. So if somebody pick an element, any element, those of you who have asked me to do this. Copper. copper. All right, copper's right here. All right. And so this is element number 29. And so we're going to start then, you're going to write down the element symbol, CU. Okay. And then we're going to build orbital notation. Now, the way you start is at the beginning. Here is hydrogen. It's in the first row of the periodic table. So the first electrons, electrons we come to, we're going to work our way up. This is like, you know, following the yellow brick road. Only we're going to follow the periodic table here, okay? We're going to end up down here when we finish, okay? So we're going to start with the first um, row, and that's row number one, okay? Now, elements in these first two columns here uh, represent the pres the placement of electrons in the S sublevel. That doesn't mean that's where they necessarily go, but it helps us to be able to write orbital notation by the where those elements are. Now, helium, when we're talking about S and P and D and F sublevel regions, uh, helium doesn't really belong here. It belongs over here. So we're going to move helium over here. And so for hydrogen and helium, this is one for the first row, S for this sublevel, and there's two electrons here. Okay? Now the S sublevel only has one orbital, and that's what this box is. The box represents the orbital. And that doesn't mean a, an, the orbital has an actual shape of a box. Orbitals don't have that shape. They have different shapes. There's spheres and there's balloon shapes and donut shapes and all this kind of stuff. But for right now, we're just going to represent it like we're this is a placekeeper, a place to kind of hold our electrons, all right? So we're in the first primary level, S sublevel, and one electron for hydrogen. Now, since helium really belongs over here, and these first two rows represent the S sublevel, and that first row where helium is is where we are right now, we're going to put another electron in here. And notice this is a, like a half an arrow. Technically, it should be an arrow, but it's just faster to make the fish hook kind of looking thing, okay? All right. So that's one S. Now, after we fill up one, there's only two electrons there. We're done. We've got to go to the second row, which means we need to have electrons in the second primary energy level. So that would be two. And the first element we come to is lithium and then beryllium. Well, that's in the S sublevel region. So we're in 2S. And so here's our orbital for 2S, or the representation we're going to be using for keeping up with electrons. And so it shows two electrons in the S sublevel in the second primary level. That's lithium and beryllium. Okay. Well, now we're going over to boron. This ain't this S sublevel anymore. I know that's not good grammar and all that, but kind of dramatic. This ain't. Okay. This ain't the S sublevel anymore. We're now in the P sublevel. Okay, over here. All right. So this is the second row. Boron through neon is in the second row. So that's two P. There are one, two, three, four, five, six elements over here, and we can put two electrons and the maximum is two electrons. We cannot put more than two electrons in an orbital. Well, if I need six electrons, then I need six orbitals. And even if I don't have that many electrons, the orbitals are there. So once we get to the P sublevel region, I have to go ahead and write out the P orbitals, okay? I thought I put three. Well, there are only three right there. Yeah, but there are six electrons for six elements. If I put two in each, it'll be six when we get there. Oh, did I say six orbitals? Yeah. I'm sorry. I misstated. Six electrons, three orbitals. And so for boron, that's one electron. For carbon, that's another electron. But wait, we, can, we don't put them initially in the same box. Okay? We're going to put one in each box and go back and pair it up. We used to, when we first introduced that, we called that the school bus rule, right? All right, so the second electron goes there. That's the one for carbon. The third electron goes here. That's the one for nitrogen. And now that I have one electron in each of those 
boxes or orbitals. We'll go back and pair it up when we get to oxygen. The fourth electron goes right here, and then fluorine, and finally neon. So the, the primary energy level is full when we get to these noble gases over here. And noble gases are stable. That is to say, they generally don't bond with anything. Larger ones will down here, but these smaller ones up here don't bond with anything. Okay? They're, they're, they have all the electrons they want in their upper energy level, the valence level, and so they don't they don't bond with anything. So these electrons that are in the highest primary energy level are the valence electrons. Of course, we haven't finished yet. We're not at copper yet. Okay? We're right now at neon. So let's go over here. We're starting on the third row. That's three. The first two columns are S sublevels, or S sublevel electrons. There's three S, one orbital, two electrons. And that's the two electrons for sodium and magnesium. Then over here for aluminum, six uh, atoms for six electrons, three orbitals. That's just one, two, three. This is the third row. So it's the third primary energy level, P sublevel region. And we've got three orbitals, one, two, three, four, five, six. We now have all the electrons for argon. We're getting there, getting closer. Now we're going to be in the fourth row. And we're starting the S sublevel region over here. So 4S, two electrons, and that's where we are with calcium at the moment. Now, when we get to scandium, all of these atoms that are arranged in the periodic table in this region here, um, these, when we put electrons into these, uh, into places that sort of take up the, where these elect atoms are located, they drop back one primary energy level. Okay? Don't ask me why. I mean, I could try to explain it to you. It has to do with three dimensional geometry and spherical geometry. No, you don't want to do that. Okay. So, um, just know that when we get to that region there where the trend, these are called, this section here is transition metals. It's also the D sublevel region. Uh, S, P, D, and F. The transition metals are in here. Uh, when we get into this section, you always have to drop back one primary energy level. So that would be not four, but three D sublevel region. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, I miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten atoms across each of these rows. So that means we need five orbitals. Okay? <coughs> two electrons for each orbital. We need five orbitals. One, two, three, four, and five. And so we're going to count the number of electrons we need. We actually need nine electrons in this section. So we're going to put one, two, three, four, five, pairing up now six, seven, eight, and nine. And that's the correct orbital notation for copper, the way that we have been teaching it in entry-level high school chemistry. Okay? Now I say it that way because this is not the actual orbital notation for copper. All right. In reality, this electron doesn't belong in 4s. It belongs down here. Don't worry about that. You don't. You don't want to deal with the exceptions. Okay. Well, you don't have to know the exceptions in this class. You just need to know when you get to college, there are exceptions. Okay. So sometimes you are going to move electrons from s down to d because that's what really happens. In fact, it's a lot more. It's really a little more complex than we, we make it seem. This really is almost telling you something about the structure of the electron cloud that's misleading, but it makes it easier to write the correct orbital notation this way. That's the only reason we do it this way. In reality, the S and D sublevels aren't real. You, we, all, we talk about the S sublevel being higher up, meaning further out from the nucleus than D, and that's not entirely true. It starts out with the D sublevel actually being higher than S, and the more electrons we put in D, the more it shrinks back so that it's lower or closer to the nucleus than the S is. But we're not going to get into that, okay? We're just trying to figure out how do we write orbital notation. But I want you to know about it, only because I've been teaching you all year, we're super simplifying things. And when you get to college or an AP chemistry class, you may have to kind of look at this a little bit differently. But no, this is how you write them. Got it? Now, that's, that's orbital notation. Now, why do I do that? Because that's how we figure out about the valence electrons, okay? Those two electrons in the highest energy level, Whatever number of electrons there are in the highest energy level, 
those are the valence electrons. So right now, copper, this copper has two electrons at the valence level. Remember I told you that that, that second electron really belongs down here? So you could say that copper really has just one electron in the valence level. And either answer, either answer would be true. What? Is 3D not the highest valence level? Why is it correct? Four. Four represents the fourth sphere, sphere, spherical region around the nucleus where you find electrons. So three here is in the same energy, primary energy level as these two. Okay? Just because the last one doesn't make it really the furthest one out or the valence level. The valence level is 4s. Now if I were to go over here to arsenic, for example, I would have another one more electron in D. We'd fill up this little slot here, build a, a 4p sublevel over here, and arsenic then would have the two valence electrons for um, potassium and calcium, these two right here. Plus we'd have 4p electrons, three of those, so arsenic would have five valence electrons. You count up all the electrons in the highest energy level. Okay? Now, this is orbital notation. Then from that we learn to build electron configurations. And you can figure out the valence and electrons from that as well. And then from that, then we wrote electron dot formulas. And that's where we wrote down only the number of electrons that are in the valence level. Okay? So that's why it's important. It's important to know about the valence electrons for a number of reasons. One is so you can write electron dot formulas. We will learn to write electron dot formulas only because we take that and then use that to do figure out how things bond ionically and covalently and how they share electrons or give up a gain electron. Okay? Okay, let me show you an electron configuration for copper. So we're going to write copper with a colon just like this. Now, here's the thing, guys. If you don't write the element symbol over here, followed by a colon, I don't know what element you're writing the electron configuration for. And so I can't give you full credit for it. So always write down the element symbol, okay? That's important. Now, with electron configurations, we're not writing the boxes that show how many electrons are in each orbital. We're counting up all the electrons that are in that sublevel, like this P sublevel has six electrons. So we'll simply write 1s and a superscript 2, that 2 represents those two electrons. And this would be 2s and a superscript 2, that superscript 2, represents these two electrons that we're showing as arrows in this box. And 2p, oh, actually I wrote it as 3, that should be 2p and 6. And then 3s, 2, 3p, 6, 4s, 2, and 3d, 9. That's an electron configuration.